seven years in age, an inch in height, an inch and a half in arm length, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, and they both weighed in within a pound of the 140-pound limit. Now, because of the time difference between Great Britain and the East Coast of the United States, that fight took place a few hours ago. So let's go now to Manchester and take a look at the fight the way I called it on video feed from there with Emmanuel Stewart and Larry Merchant. Okay, guys, I give you a throwing in the dressing room. Let's have a clean match. Good luck and God bless you. McCloskey calls this his rainbow fight, as in a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if he can win. A physical difference between the two fighters visible here in the ring. Amir Khan looks even more buff, stronger even than in his appearance against Maidana at the end of last year. McCluskey, by contrast, is the looser muscle of the two fighters. McCluskey fights with his hands held low. Khan is expected to go after him with his jab upstairs. And the first big swing of the bout is a roundhouse right by Khan. That missed. McCloskey reminds me of a looser version of a Chris Nassim Hamed. Without the strength, out of coordination. Amir Khan enters the fight under a business cloud, which may have cost him considerable money. The promotion has been bedeviled by organizational problems. Even McCloskey may be making more money than Khan, who appears to have lost upward of a million dollars in moving the fight from one wet network to another. With all that as the context, Emmanuel, how do you expect things to go? I think they're going to always pretty much like they're going here. No one has landed a solid punch yet, but I think the fact that Khan is coming out so aggressive is going to make a difference in the fight, probably by his being physically stronger. But, you know, I'm very impressed also with McCloskey. He's very loose, has not been hit too much with any solid punches, and usually to fight a guy like McCloskey, you like to let him get out of balance a lot because the way he punches, leap, leap with those punches, you let him get out of balance and take advantage of him, much the way that Marco Antonio Burrell did with Prince Nassim Mohamed. The graphic here, Emmanuel, suggests that you do believe the distractions will bother Khan. I do. Minute 15 still to go in round one. Khan has been offensively aggressive here in the first round. McCloskey looking for opportunities to counter. When there are distractions, the real question is, is the opponent good enough to take advantage of them? If Khan is 95 or 98 percent, can McCloskey deal with that? Khan landed a 1-2 upstairs. McCloskey dropped his hands and glared at him as if to say, not much. But the best offensive flurry of the fight so far belongs to Amir Khan. Landing the jab, missing with the right. Some have the temerity to suggest that McCloskey's southpaw style might be bothersome for Khan. An interesting thought when you consider that Khan now spars with the most successful southpaw in the history of boxing, Manny Pacquiao. But, but nevertheless, Khan has been unsuccessful in Madden two or three punches together. I think he's landed three punches this round, which will give him the round but he's not been able to put together combinations. Earlier you saw the CompuBox numbers. CompuBox counting Khan's landed punches and double figures. And he appears to take round one. McCluskey 
is one of those fighters who makes his opponents swing with everything at nothing. Yes, he's very elusive. He grips, slides, bends over to the left, goes back, puts his hands up, very, very relaxed. Oscar Deloy at ringside in the background, watching Khan as Amir tries to launch the offense in round two. Right hand over the top, drives McClaskey back toward the corner. Khan leading twice with the right in this round. Possible tactical change. Khan gets to the body with the right hand. And between rounds, you saw, of course, Khan's familiar trainer, Freddie Roach, and the trainer, McCloskey, John Green. Khan lands a left hook, but stepping away as he did so. Klosky's hands are held back as Khan throws combinations. And Emmanuel, it appears there's a tremendous hand speed advantage for Amir Khan here. Khan How is, can he best take advantage of it? He has great hand speed, but you know, he's, he's doing what he has to do to try to win this fight. If you'll notice as he's punching now, he's almost like running in with punches. Not really sitting down, just trying to make contact because he's realizing it's extremely difficult to hit McCarthy with clean punches. So he's just running in with the short punches of any type, just trying to get the points now. Given Khan's hand speed and the effectiveness of his jab, and recognizing that it would be a style adjustment for McCloskey to try to hold his guard higher. But can he continue to fight with his hands held that low? You know, McCloskey is a, one of those right-handed southpaws, Jim. He's, a, he's right handed. That's his best hand. And he's going to, tr he tried just a moment ago to land a looping right to catch Khan. That's his best hope. That's what well, most of our southpaws in history are right handers. It goes from Marvelous Marvin Hagler, not by the Andy Lee. Here in the second round, and particularly by leading with the right hand, Khan has begun to get to McCloskey with more effective landed punches than was the case in round one. And, and while Khan is able to throw in combination, McCloskey throws one punch at a time. Yeah, McCloskey is going to fight because he's fast and he's outworking it. But McCloskey is very relaxed and he's never been hit too much with solid punches together. A moment for the Irish to cheer as McCloskey landed two right hands. By his own admission, the right hook is his most dangerous punch. And round two comes to a close. Larry Merchant, give us a look at the 140-pound picture. Well, one of the most active divisions in boxing, Bradley and Khan, uh, fated to meet in July, perhaps, if Khan wins tonight. And Judah, who recently won a vacant title. Among the top guys, Bradley and Khan, of course, Alexander, who still has a lot of splaining to do after that poor performance against Bradley, and of course, Maidana, who gives the most excitement to this division, had another exciting fight unexpectedly with Morales last weekend. There are fewer than a half dozen weight classes in boxing in which there is a clearly identifiable, well-defined, controlling champion. This division will become one of them if Amir Khan fights Timothy Bradley as expected on July 23. But that requires that Khan get past McCloskey in this fight. McCloskey trying to make Khan reach and hope that he can get back underneath or over Khan with a counter shot. McCloskey is working fairly good. Defensive wise, he cannot mount an offensive attack of his own. That's his problem. One of the things Khan is doing, a very clever thing, is he's, he's neutralizing McCloskey's right hand with his own left and keeping his right high uh, to defend himself. 
and taking his chances when they occur. Khan's fighting with his hands up, McCloskey's fighting with his hands down, and so far that's a tactical difference in the fight that is working for Amir Khan. He lands his jab before McCloskey can get his guard up. And now he lands a straight right hand before McCloskey can get his guard up. A reaching left hand for McCloskey. And again, tremendous excitement from the Irish contingent in the crowd. Right hand upstairs and one to the body by Khan. Khan sidesteps McCloskey's left hand. Khan is fighting the perfect fight for this type of fight. It's very difficult to fight a guy like McCloskey, but he's at least putting pressure, throwing his volume of punches, and winning the fight simply because of his work output is much better. Yeah, it's like a, 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 a speed chess match, except Khan has more pieces on the board. Yeah, and he keeps his body in good position. His punches are short punches. fighters about hitting to the back of the head. The next Real Sports features a profile of Philadelphia Philly shortstop Jimmy Rollins. The former MVP will explain how his softball playing mother taught him to play baseball. May 21, it's the rematch of the disputed draw between light heavyweight champion Jean Pascal and Bernard Hopkins. Also that night, Chad Dawson returns to the ring for the first time since his loss to Pascal, taking on Adrian DiNacanu. Those fights are in Montreal. Round four of a scheduled 12. Amir Khan defending his 140-pound championship.